Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Eric. I've been in this secret room for hours. At first, I wasn't worried. I thought I would find a way out. But then, I started panicking. I could only imagine my parents' distress when they realized I disappeared. They might have even gone to the police when they couldn't find me. It must have been long past midnight. I was so close to them. But how could they know I was in a secret room under my bed? So how did I end up in this room? First, I need to tell you something. I didn't walk into this room. I fell into it. The hatch on the ceiling somehow broke open and I fell into this secret room. But the problem was, the hatch was closed and wouldn't open. That's why I couldn't go back to my room. It all began when my mom asked me to tidy up my room. I went to the kitchen for dinner. Dinner will be ready in 15, mom said. You should get your room in order while you're waiting. It looks like a war zone in there. I don't feel great these days. Please help me out a little. Mom, that's my room. Why do you care if it's messy or not? I groaned. My dad was reading the news on his phone. He said, Son, you heard your mother. She said she didn't feel well. Let's help her out so she can rest up and get better soon. My room was such a mess. I began picking up all the clothes that I'd thrown around. Thankfully, I put everything back and it looked fine. The only thing I couldn't find was one of my pizza printed socks. I could rejoin everyone in the kitchen after finding it. I had to check under the bed to see if it was there. I bent down to look. There it was. My sock was there, and somehow it had moved all the way to the wall. I reached for it, but it was impossible. I pushed myself a little further under the bed while checking the floor with my hand to grab the sock at the same time. Suddenly, a hatch opened, and I fell into a hole. The crude landing left me hurting all over, but I didn't find any broken bones on further inspection. I looked around. It was just an empty room. There was only a single ladder leading up to the hatch on the ceiling. The hatch closed with a mechanical hum when I fell down the hole. I searched for the controls to open the hatch for hours, but had no luck. My parents ran a gift shop together. They were supposed to go on a work trip the following day, but I was sure they'd drop everything to come looking for me. As I stood staring at the hatch on the ceiling, I had a thought. Since the hatch was open briefly, the control mechanism had to be close. I climbed up the ladder to take a closer look at the ceiling. Slowly, I moved my hand across the ceiling on the same path I had looked for the sock. When my hand brushed the pressure plate, the hatch suddenly opened. I hollered in excitement and climbed up through the small opening. I could hardly breathe before, but was so relieved to be free. Where were my parents? I ran out of my room. I followed the sound of voices coming from the kitchen. When I walked in, everything seemed normal. My mom was cooking, my dad was reading messages on his phone. Once in a while, he would tell my mom something about what he had just read. My mom smiled when she saw me. <laughs> that was fast, honey. Are you sure you managed to clean up that mess in such a short time? Dinner's ready in 10 minutes. You can start setting the table if you want to help. I looked at my mom in disbelief. I had been in that secret room for hours, but my mom said it had only been 10 minutes. It was still early evening, and they were still doing the same things as when I had left the kitchen. How was that even possible? Had I lost my sense of time in the secret room? Of course I hadn't. There's no way I could have found the pressure plate to open the hatch in 10 minutes. I didn't know the exact time, but I was sure I had been stuck there for at least 5 hours. Unless I'd gone crazy. There was only one explanation. Time had stopped outside of the secret room. That meant that my entrance and exit had happened without any time passing. If I had fallen into the secret room at 7.15 p.m., then the time never changed. So it was still 7.15 p.m. I knew what I was thinking didn't make sense, but there was no other explanation for what was happening to me. Still, I decided to test my wild theory before sharing it with my family. As soon as dinner finished, I returned to my room. I locked the door. I pulled my bed to the side. I didn't know exactly where the control was, so I moved my hand around the floor as if I were looking for my sock again. My heart skipped a beat when I saw the hatch open. This time, I took my phone in with me. I noted the time as I descended into the hole. It was precisely 9.10 p.m. I climbed down the ladder. The hatch closed on its own. Here I was again in the secret room. I looked at my phone to see if the time had stopped, but the screen was pitch black. I tried to turn it back on, but I couldn't. Maybe electronic devices didn't work in the secret room. I looked around even more closely this time. 
but nothing was out of the ordinary. Why would time stop outside? Perhaps the room was the work of some genius physicist, built using their superhuman intelligence and classified scientific knowledge. So why not announce this incredible invention to the rest of the world? I was sure they had their reasons, but I doubt I'd ever find out about them. After I felt like I had stayed long enough, I left the room to check the time. I climbed the ladder. By now, I could quickly locate the pressure plate. I moved my hand across the ceiling and activated it. The hatch opened with a mechanical whirring sound. I climbed out of the hole and back into my room. I checked my phone. It was precisely 9.10 p.m., the same as when I entered the room. Time stops. Time really stops, I murmured to myself in amazement. There's a room under my bed where the time stops. My parents were gone when I woke up the following day. They had gone on that work trip I told you about before. They'd be away for a whole week. Without waiting, I opened the hatch and climbed down the ladder. I had only one question in my head. I now had a room where time stopped, but what would I do with it? I started thinking. I could study for my exams in this room. If I knew I would have a difficult test, I wouldn't have to lose any sleep because I had a room where time stopped. I didn't even need to set aside time for sleep. I could sleep as long as I wanted in the secret room. I could have actual 24-hour days. Since time stops inside the secret room, you wouldn't age well inside either. If I spent most of my life in that room, I could live up to 200 years by usual standards. These were just a few things I could think of off the top of my head. I was sure I could find other uses for it. Every night, my dad would call to check on me. Is everything okay? He would ask. Everything's great, I'd reply. Our conversations lasted 30 seconds at most. It was strange if I'm being honest. Usually when they went on a trip, my parents would call me every night expecting a report on how my day had gone. On this particular trip, I didn't hear from my mom at all, not even once. When they finally got back, I found out why. My dad called the morning before they got home. Son, your mom has some health issues. You might not like what you see. I was so shocked when my mom walked through the door. Her hair had fallen out completely. She had huge black circles under her eyes, and she looked exhausted. I hugged her tight. We cried in each other's arms. Later, my dad told me about my mom's condition. She had a brain tumor. It was growing rapidly. They had hid it from me because they knew it would break my heart. This hadn't been a work trip at all. My mom had spent the entire time undergoing intensive chemo treatment at the hospital. The treatment had worked, but the tumor was growing so fast that there wasn't enough time. That's why the doctors said my mom only had a 10% chance of recovery. I stopped my dad mid-sentence. We can stop the tumor from growing, I said. In a bewildered voice, dad said. What do you mean? By stopping time, I shouted in excitement. He looked at me in confusion. He probably thought I had lost my mind from grief. I took him to my room. I opened the hatch to the secret room and began telling him my story. He naturally had a hard time believing it. I showed him the time. Then we went down into the secret room together. I told my dad all about the room while we were down there. Then, we went back up to my room. I immediately showed my dad the time. As before, our time in and out was the same. It's a miracle. We really could save your mom's life, he said with tears of joy. Then he went to see my mom and tell her all about it. That night, we brought a bed down into the secret room, along with my mom's favorite books and most prized possessions. My mom began her stay there full time. She only left the room for her chemo treatment at the hospital. One day, I went to the hospital with her. When the doctor said, I have good news. The tumor in her brain suddenly stopped growing. The treatment is working, and her cancer is in remission. It will likely disappear soon. My mom and I took a deep sigh of relief. Of course, we didn't tell the doctor. The secret room was our family's biggest secret. When the doctor left, my mom hugged me. She shed a few tears. Honey, you saved my life. I can't tell you how grateful I am, she said. As the doctor said, the tumor in my mom's brain shrank and finally disappeared. She's completely healthy now, and we're all so happy. We used to rent this house, but dad bought it. So finally, the secret room is ours forever. My parents hang out down there too, but I'm the one who stays there the longest. 
and every time I'm in there, I thank the secret room and the secret hero who built it for saving my mom's life. <laughs>